film up. Welcome everyone to the film Bob. That's Anders. I'm our best friend hosts for today. Top five royals. Uh, the male version. We'll uh, follow this up with a female version because there's just too many royals out there in films to list on one list. What what happened? What happened? Just now. I'm introing the show. To begin the program. What happened? What was going on with you there? I, I You got uh, the giggles? I imagined. Hmm? <laughs> I was um, forced to imagine your reaction to, um, hmm. well, a couple of my entries, and it wasn't positive. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. I saw the clip, and uh, can I can assure you it will not be positive. It might be positive. <sighs> like George Brett or something? I would, no, don't I'll fucking lower myself to that. Hmm. It's Bo Jackson. <laughs> well, he was a royal, wasn't he? I always think of him as a white sock. <laughs> Really? Yeah. The the team after he broke his hip, and and what lost Don't all judge his pop. me from how I imagine that Bo Jackson's past team. Don't spoil judge me. Spoiling the ESPN thirty for thirty. I know. On untold. Bo Jackson. Untold. Uh, does this go somewhere? Is that, does that get plugged in somewhere? It is plugged in. Everything's plugged in, Brad. Brad. Don't you worry your little pretty head about. I the tech- pointed out something earlier. He was very wanted- excited that he saved the show. I'm trying to make it so Avery can be on, but uh, he can't be. No one's clamoring for that. I feel like everyone clamors for the Avery. I don't know that's true. I think it's absolutely true. Is this camera not working? Well, having three cameras set uh, plugged into my my melting little, down the Mac. My poor little Mac uh, Pro uh, is is not doing well. Oh no! Yeah, it, it slowed everything down, and uh, the entire right, fuck it. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Do it. I hate failure. I hate it. You must pay it. I, I hate so lot. much. So yeah, that's why I'm always angry, Brian. A lot of failure in my life. You understand me? Do you want my uh, my little your failure? Thing? I got enough, but <laughs> no, I got. I got the Do you want my thing. life? <laughs> yeah, seriously, think about that. All right, here we go. Let's rock it. Let's roll it. Are we on YouTube? Yes, we're on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. How are you? How is everybody? So people are, people are uh, checking it in. They're commenting. I, you know, I did this thing and I tried to find it, but oh shucks, I couldn't, Brian. But I was, I was. <sighs> what I, was it? I was gonna. Uh, Use it as punishment. Uh, I have double myself right now on the old you. Ah, I'm moving you around. Come on, I, I, this is too much for me. Um, I gotta get rid of the double myself uh, as punishment for fucking up with breaking last week. I was gonna read the review, uh, which was so upsetting to me. And actually, I can't know if you heard last week's after disaster. It came up on the after disaster. Oh, really? I was doing some work on the YouTube, some back end work. Mm-hmm. If you must know, Brian, something you have no idea how to do or, or <laughs> I don't know what that doing. means. I probably put two or three hours into shit every week on the, uh, the film vault that you just, uh, and I always picture you just enjoying yourself, relaxing, watching bad, like article movies. And I get, I get enraged. Right. But, uh, I was doing some YouTube work and I can't remember which episode it it's was, accurate. but I, I did this thing where I dared myself. I do this all the time. And I was already having a really bad day. I was already You know, I battle stuff sometimes and I was a little bit fragile that day and, you know, my heart was kind of, you know, racing and not in a good place. I I, I have like, you know, I have, I I get, I get, I get some, you know, some ups and downs. I get to. I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. And I was, I was having, uh, I'm not trying to pay myself a victim. Why don't you call your friend Baldy next time? No, I will not do. But, you know, sometimes I, 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 I I have, you know, I'm just a little bit, I get, I get the blues, right? Mm -hmm. We all get them. And, uh, I was on there and I'm like, you know what? Don't do it. Don't look at any of the comments. I saw there was a bunch of comments. I'm like, don't. And I dare myself. I'm like, yeah, just, just, just do a quick. I mean, you got to engage. You got to engage. So the very fucking first comment that I saw, and I, and I, and I read it a few times just to make sure that I oh, good. was reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's sink in. <laughs> you weren't reading with your heart. You were reading with your eyes. I was reading with all everything. Yeah. Right. At first, I was just like balls. At first, it just hurt. It was just like, ah, uh, this is why you don't look right. And I just got like deeper, sunk deeper. But then I'm like, all right, let's read this, this again. And then I'm like, well, let's read it a third time. What is this person oh, actually no. saying? And then I thought, now there is a chance. Because like the way that I think Tyler put it, like, it was as though this was created in a lab, this this comment. I remember this. Was created oh, in a lab. Oh, yes, yes. I remember writing, I mean, reading upset. this. <laughs> I think you Wouldn't might. Wouldn't surprise you if I uh, posted this. It comment. really would not surprise me if I found out that you posted this. Just to fuck with me. I agree with that for what it's worth. But I think it would take too much time and you wouldn't bother to do I know, so. I, know I wouldn't participate. So someone, the comment that I read was, it started like this. It said, I know Baldy is, is too humble to ever say anything. 
Right, right away. <laughs> right there. Right away. I know he, he knows the show. He, he knows me. <laughs> this really upset. Is this someone knows me personally? When I brought it up on the after disaster, Corona was just like humble. <laughs> So he goes on to say, I know he's too humble to ever, so I'll say it for him. Like this guy's like being a real hero speaking on your behalf. Um, I appreciate that because I wanted to say something, uh, like commenter, but uh, I'm too humble to bring it up. Watching the YouTube, uh, he says, watch it. And then he goes on to say, Bald, Baldy is, the, as, as Brian is the more talented of the two, right? Which Did is he just say a, that? Yeah, he said that, okay. which is just a fucking gut shot, right? Again, you know, this is I, someone some who knows people, me well. Some people are going to see it that way. Many people won't. Right, <laughs> this guy evidently does. You're, you, you, the way That's you phrase I'm... that makes it sound like the majority of people would disagree <laughs> with that statement. <laughs> At least three stars of them. So, so exactly half? <laughs> no, more than sixty percent. Brian, do the math. So then he goes on to say, "Pinned by my own snake." This fucking guy. <laughs> this fucking guy. This guy's out there walking around right now. He has no idea that he just ruined my day. He's listening right now. <laughs> I'm sure he is. He goes on to say, "You might be watching." Brian, <laughs> Brian is the more talented of the two. He's too humble to say. He's too humble to say this. So I'll say it for him. Um, Brian's half of the screen is less than half of the screen. Yeah, I wasn't going to say anything, which is blood. absurd. I went to great lengths to make sure that because there's no grid or anything, but I went to great lengths to make sure that they are equal value. But and no it, grid. they move around, like they move around. But I went to, and, and when I say great lengths, while setting it up before the show, you guys both sat here and watched me and waited for me to do it. Uh, but it's, You're it's mumbling, ha- gotta have more me. It's halfway. <laughs> and then he also complains that the Film Vault logo is on your side of the screen, which oh, is kind further, of standard. Further diminishing. To just have the logo on the right side of the screen. That's usually where further they go. Further diminishing and he says screen it, size. It lets us see less of Baldy, which he's got to be fucking with uh, me and just fucking around. He's not wrong. Does he, he wants to see your chest? Like it's a, it's a small little box that just says the film vault branding. It just it makes you ball? feel better, exactly. Brian. I, I was removed entirely from the uh, broadcast. So yeah, he's no longer that was on by it. request. <laughs> I mean, I told you where to go. You can be right there and you can be on the broadcast. Everyone needs to see her. Your confusing face. Confusing. That's part of Not his confused. bit. It's part of, it's part of his, uh. It's part of his stand-up routine, which you don't have any idea about. Oh, they're confusing. What was it? What was it you said? Uh, You you confuse people. You you said this confuses people. Oh, yeah. (laughs) People look at me like uh, I'm a street sign and they're figuring out if it's okay (laughs) to park. It was really good. That was good shit. Like he does it and he does like the, I'm not trying to burn your bit, but I mean, you're here. All right. Okay. So I I am here. You are here. confusing one, Avery. Mm. Uh, he said that he's confused. He confuses people, white people. I get very confused by his complexion, like what he is. And he, and he equated it to people trying to figure out if they're allowed to park. And I'm glad to know I'm not the only one. <laughs> no, confused. far from it. Far, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's do this. Uh, let's get, have you the corrected program. the proportion issue? It was never a problem to begin with. <laughs> I mean, get a fucking ruler out. I'm it's, too humble to bring it up. I think that this this fucker might be like looking at your wall or something because you're framed by the backdrop of your French Venetian blinds. Where they French? They're French blinds. They're just shutters. They're French. French. They're French. They're French shutters. Venetian. They're French blinds. Is what French they're. Venetian. They're not French Venetian. There's they're Venetian shutters and there's those are French blinds. Are they? And you're framed. And then there's a wall there's and a it kind of looks I like. These are farmhouse shutters. Oh, look at you trying. To I don't know. I'm just. That's too rustic for your lifestyle. That's kind of our brand. <laughs> Rustic right. elegance. Rustic <laughs> elegance. <laughs> that was actually Christie's. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, for our wedding. It's like I want to be rustic. I want to be rustic. Uh, Jillian, uh, she always does, and that was uh, Brian. I was dying. Brian's wife. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, wearing the yoga pants last week. A lot of people thought that was my wife. People get confused. Oh, really? Yeah. I said, hey, you lovely, lovely lady. Just not my lovely lady. Mm-hmm. All right. But yeah, Jillian's you had always a vomit emoji. That was rude. I did not. I don't. I don't speak an emoji. All right. You have never. I'm a used, fucking grown man. I've never used an emoji. That's not true. I mean, not one of the like the like the little animated ones. I do like the. I do old school. I, I'm committed to. It. I do the uh, colon. Nothing but eggplant. Close parentheses. You. Oh, I see. Yeah. The, the happy face and the sad face. Yeah, I, I do the same thing sometimes. Yeah. Interesting. I no longer it's can do that. Hip <laughs> shit. It's a what? Hip <laughs> 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 shit. Avoiding emojis. <laughs> Uh, Jillian, look at us, so principled. Jillian uh, talks about how she wants cl- classy Halloween 
Only, only classy Halloween but decorations. But against Halloween. I know. Halloween's uh, cheesy. We have a five-year-old. I'm yeah. like, come on. She's like, classy. It may be the most classless of yeah. the, of the Halloween's decorations. Halloween's gauche. She wants... She Halloween's wants, garish. Garish is what you were going for, yeah. yeah. She, she she wants like uh, like she likes the like the skeleton like statues that are like bronzed or like <laughs> chromed on the on the you. mantle. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I know what classy Halloween is. I'm just saying Halloween's not the time for that. And not especially when you have a five year old yes. now. She go for the, the cheesy, yeah, you, corny fun. You, two tissues, crumble one up, put it inside the other, tie it off. You got a you got a ghost. There you go, homemade ghosts. I used to do that as a kid. Rustic elegance. Now, I've been collecting garish Halloween decorations every estate that we go to, <laughs> and they're all up in the you attic. Got three, and they are all going to come down very soon. And it's not going to be happy a happy house for the wife. She's going to be very upset with me, hmm. and I can't wait. I'll show I, it off on the next on the uh, the live. I was going to say I'm excited to marvel uh, to Jillian over how well decorated the house is. <laughs> yes, please do. Help me out. All right, I will. Jillian, love what you've done the place. <laughs> It's burst with all such of an eye. Are you, here's the irony: is good instincts. We lived childless for mm -hmm. all those years. Like I was the, I'm just, a, I'm a big kid, right? So mm -hmm. I would have one year when we lived in our apartment together. The entire place was just covered in 99 cent store uh, yeah, Halloween decorations. Perfect, because I love it, right? And she put up with it. Now that we have a five year old, where that that kind of, uh, she uh, wants it, a lot of decorations you can't touch. That kind of interior design eye, mine would have, would come in real handy with a five year old. Yeah. Now she's disposable. Like, yeah, you gotta sweeping it out. Mm. Like, nope, that's not allowed. Only classy. What the fuck? What have I done? It's not the time for that. Oh, Jillian. There's a time and a place. Wait till you see the uh, <laughs> some of the things that I bought when you weren't looking. <laughs> I'll take that lot. Oh, I, I think I bought some like kids. Like it was just like the kids' shit that they made in school, like <laughs> like third grade. <laughs> was in your pants. <laughs> you bought like turkeys. Yeah, the turkey with the hand. Yeah. I'm just imagining you walking around the house with a beard, just going vintage. It's vintage. <laughs> it's real old, honey. It's old vintage. shit. <laughs> antique. Let me ask you something. Mm. In these, uh, uh, these antique, will be Andersons. In antique. these antique sales <laughs> or these uh, estate sales, you ever come across like hoarders' houses? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, we bought something. Uh, we we're about to buy something the other day, and I looked inside. I'm like, oh, look, like three dead cockroaches. No, thanks. I was going to say, aren't those normally in terrible condition? Sometimes they have a lot they're of really stuff, bad. But, uh, but they're fun because you get the, like, what are these? the ones I don't like. Hoarder the houses. Uh, the, the houses it's like. It's mostly worthless junk. It's, yeah. But you find that you pick. That's mm. the fun part. Like, it's the hunt. The ones that I don't love are the ones that have been meticulously gone through for like three weeks. And there's a lot of them that are like this and they all have price tags on them and they're all like nicely sorted. Oh, you and don't like that. Clean. I don't, I don't love that because there's really no sport in it. Like, uh, I like going through a house. It's been curated. Like there's one guy's name. I shouldn't be giving out the name, but like tall Rob, tall Rob's fucking shit. And we love going to Doc's his cause tall Rob, yeah, tall so Rob so. does not. I mean, he'd love the business. Right. And he does like the Valley. He goes all over LA. But uh, whenever we see a tall Rob estate sale, we're like, fucking let's go. Because uh, he usually doesn't do inventory. He just lets you find stuff. It doesn't price anything. You find the shit. Nice. You go to him and then it'll be like, ah, 80 bucks, right? And then you go, ah, Rob, I was thinking, well, you know, like that kind of thing. Back, in, I, But I don't do that. I'm Have not, you I run into Blue Toad Betty? Jenny. I've not seen Jenny. Oh. But I haven't been out there in a couple of weeks. It's she thinks a, she's still with slow. us. Jenny, yeah, but she died after all these years. <laughs> Just recently. So that's what happened. She is a new angry little man, though. And I did get Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you have video? Oh, I know. Not video, but a picture. I took a picture. This is what an angry little man looks like. I posted the picture on the, uh, <laughs> somewhere deep. I mean, it's not public. I like to see it. I feel rude for even suggesting that I did that. But uh, she was the worst. Yeah. Okay. Enough about this. This has nothing to do with movies. What was oh, I gonna, Rustic uh, Elegance, being of elegance. Mm -hmm. Yes. The royalty. Yes. That's right. To keep it on track, Avery. Thank you. Another shout out for Clever Kind Productions. Uh, <laughs> hit up uh, down Elegance. there, the, down the the uh, the link right down there. Let's uh, let's, uh, let's get some. Uh, let's let's, Are you putting let's it on do my some business. Too? Let's do some put, business. You should, put, uh, you should comically put every link and every uh, lower third on my side. Like a blackout bar. Yeah, it's yeah. Just <laughs> To looking, anonymize you. Looking to book some business uh, uh, for book, some production. Book, book right here. Right here. Mike book. Carano and I are clever, kind productions. All right. Thank you. Uh, that, that was gauche. I, if, if it was up to me, I'd cut that out, but I'm not going to ask Avery to, so let's just move forward. I promised Carano that I'd do that. All right? That's a lie. I, I don't think myself. you have to apologize for promoting Mike is all about self-promotion. <laughs> That's right. He's a relentless That's his one tenant. 
I gotta get me out there. Shove it down people's throats. All right, Royals, Brian. What do you think about Royals? Uh, Avery, you weigh in here too, even though you're not on camera anymore. Well, you have the uh, wife of British uh, heritage. Mm-hmm. Uh, do, does she have any affinity or thoughts? Zero. As as do I. Yeah. I, I don't care. I I couldn't name more. Well, now uh, not more than two. Can I tell you this? Mm. In my research this week, I got very sleepy. Oh, really. I got very sleepy. And if I did the research a year ago, I would have gotten more sleepy because I, I get less sleepy now after having watched all of the crown, which is very good. I, I have, have a, seen a few episodes, of a crown. better appreciation for that Royal family mm-hmm. and like what it all means. I have more context because the crown is a very good show. Yeah. I bet they're going to get huge numbers now that the you know, queen oh, yeah. is done with all that. Yeah. It's almost like that family started going off for the crown because they were kind of sleepy, yeah. not doing much. And then once the crown became a thing, that's when the people started leaving. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're trying. Exactly. They're like, we could do the Kardashians too, but (laughs) But, royal style. (laughs) Yeah. So. Well, they're the original reality show, right? In watching the research, going through the research, so many movies came up that I have actively avoided over the years Mm -hmm. because I don't like posh things. I don't like people thinking they're in charge. I don't like thrones. I don't like thrones. It, It just all makes the garish, gaudy gaucheness of it all, which is much like Halloween, I guess. I just, I hate it. I hate. I, I, I'm, I think we're on the same page. My list is uh, four fun royals and one who is, well, they're all fun, but one who, only one who is really sort of taking the piss out of uh, the whole idea of royals. Mm, interesting. You know what I'm saying? It'll be a fun list. Fun list. I got a I got a fun list, and I, I love my uh, my list, and I love all these movies that they're associated with as well. And I uncovered one. I uncovered one, one that I had forgotten about uh, for for many years, mm-hmm. and it belongs uh, on the list, and oh, yeah. it is my number three on my list. And uh, I'm excited to bring my light on that because it's a movie that uh, gets no love. All the uh, 2007 movies. So we'll be talking about that. I got Emperors, Kings. I too have a 2007 movie. Mm, unlikely, I don't, I don't unlikely think. to be the same one. Uh, but also, I have uh, Benevolent and Malevolent. What? I got, I got the oh, evil I and see, I got the I nice. See, I, I got the evil and the nice, and I got a tie at my my number one, Brian. That, I'm uh, excited for the female list coming up. That's next week, right? That's right. Next uh, week we do. Oh boy! Are we doing fall preview next? No, week? no, that the week after. That'll be the last uh, day of September. When that comes out. When it's officially fall. That's right. It's going to be a little late, though. Crisp in the a little late, bud. No, that's what we do every year. I can, yeah. I can show you. The last week of September? To late September. Mm-hmm. It could mm-hmm. be 20-something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I just don't want to be behind, you know, I, be yeah. behind everybody else that's I, doing their... Please. They, they did it like in the spring. the last word? They did it in spring. You know what I'm saying? In the spring. Uh, I will say, not really any clever picks uh, this time, but... Uh, oh, the female list. I already got my number one. Clever. You're not going to like it. No? Yeah. Is it? Safe. Directed by James Cameron. Brian. God, I know you too well. How I know you, you too that? fucking well. <laughs> no, Brian. It's the queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the queen xenomorph. Uh, this guy. Queen. This guy. Brian. You got there quick. <laughs> Head him off the bat. <laughs> Safe. Safe. There's no saving, Brian. That's been breaking. That's been breaking. <laughs> you look breaking. To the, you look to the mountain and you cut him off immediately. He didn't even have time go. to start going up there. Get down. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the yodeler on uh, Price is Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Stop you right in your tracks. All right. Uh, All right. Real choices, though. You want me to go first? It's been 892 That's what you got to say. That's what I got to say. 892 It's been ruined. Uh, huh. All right, yeah, we, 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 you go ahead first. Number five for me. Mm. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we are being that giddy, ridiculous show that just laughs at everything. Well, what's wrong with us? You know what? Brian started to set the tone for this episode. That's true. Yeah. That's very true. Shows that just started, like they get nervous, they get nervous energy, and they laugh a lot. And I can't I can't stand it. And I can't listen yeah, to like a lot of these shows. Have you nothing. noticed? <laughs> We're kind of laughing at nothing right we now. We are. We absolutely are. Yeah. Number five. Uh, I've been accused. We have been accused. We've been guilty uh, in the past mm. of um, heaping too much praise on the uh, lone white face in a uh, movie otherwise populated by I mean, it happened color. once, and it was a pretty uh, egregious error. Uh, not error, but it was a pretty egregious uh, example. It did happen again, and I stand by it. 
Although it is actually, a, I, I would say a more egregious uh, example because this is a uh, film. Uh, well, yeah, this is a project populated with just magnificent performances from mm. people of color, and one white face who I'm not going to say steals the show, but is certainly very memorable. I'm talking, of course, go. about King George the Third from Hamilton. I thought that's where you were going. This was the first one I thought of, and I forgot about it when putting together my list. I love this fucking character. Easy, buddy. I easy, love him. Easy. He's the best. His song is the best. I He's think okay. we can all agree on that. He's okay. Uh, he holds his own. You'll be back, and uh, and we'll and be back <laughs> like before. Uh, one of one of my favorite guys at my acting class. Uh, what my, happens? My next? mentally challenged IDD acting class. Uh, he performed that at the live show, and now whenever I hear the song, which is often because I have it on my backyard playlist, I hear "You'll Be Back." I'll be back. Hey, Brian. <laughs> I have a brain tumor. If anyone shouldn't be making fun of people the way they talk. I mean, it wasn't that far off. That's mm. the problem, That's too. How you couldn't even this tell I was doing a voice. screams, and I fucking oh. love it. I love it. Now, whenever nice. I hear the song, I, I picture him doing it, and I, it makes it even better. But you'll be back in, uh, in, it wouldn't be nice to be in the room, or the two in the room. Oh, the room where it happened? Yeah, the but room where it happened. But he's not in that one. No, no, those oh, are the two best songs. Good. You know what song I like best is... No, um, that's the wrong answer. Oh, what's the, I haven't heard the soundtrack in so long, but it's... Uh, I do, I do, I do, I do, uh, help, helpless. So helpless. It's like the, the girl singing. It's good. Poppy. Finger poppy music. Well, it's good. Helpless. One week later in the living room stressing. No. Okay. I mean, no. <laughs> no, the answer is no. <laughs> King George the III played as Jonathan Groff. Not the first time he's played royalty. Uh, he was uh, also uh, voiced the, uh, the role of Kristoff in Frozen, who, be, who becomes royalty through marriage. Mm. Mm. Does that count? I guess it counts. Yeah, yeah. Technically. Yeah. Married into the monarchy. You, you ever watch, uh, what's a crime story uh, that he was in? Really, really good. It was, I don't uh, believe I did. He's like, works with the FBI, and uh, he, he goes in, he interviews, they, they, he interviews actual oh, the serial killers. Oh. Uh, what's it? Can you find uh, his? Is it, uh, it was like Groff. it was like on HBO Max or Prime. It was a. It was, a uh, was it Fargo? No, it was not. It was very good. We watched it's pretty intense. But is I, it not on uh, Netflix? I thought that it might be Netflix. Yeah, that seems like a Netflix show. But I watched like the first season, I think, and uh, he interviews actual serial killers. But it's what comes next. Yeah. And he was very different. I couldn't believe that he was King King George. All right, here we go. Number uh, five for me uh, is, I'm going to say this wrong, King Agamemnon. 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 Agamemnon, played by Sean Connery in Time Bandits. Oh. Uh, he fights a men Minotaur? Minotaur. Minotaur. Minotaur, yeah. Minotaur, Minotaur which is what uh, The Shining like was all centaur. about. Centaur. The Shining was all about a Minotaur. We know that, right? Remember the Shining was all about a Minotaur. <laughs> room 237, that documentary about those five nutbags who think that The Shining is about this or it's about that. No, I remember the, the girl movie. thought it was all about Minotaurs. There were so many. She really did. There were so many five. crazy theories being thrown out that I was having trouble remembering Did them you all. see that? I did. Do you I, remember the Minotaur woman? No. Yeah, no, I did. There <laughs> was really so did. much shit being thrown at the wall. So good. My favorite thing, though, I think out of that was when they were showing uh, Danny biking around and how his loop doesn't line up. Yes. And they were doing it in real time. That was cool how it's just yeah, the yeah. entire layout of the hotel is distorted. And then the, didn't, the, didn't the pattern change on the carpet at some point? Like it changed it's like between shots. I saw it twice. I don't remember that. Well, no, well you wouldn't notice because it's just, it's just a no, I saw not the shining. That's oh, the shining like 10 times. Yeah, yeah, 237. Oh, this is a fun little fact. Logan, I was watching his YouTube videos, right? Logan uh, set out to do his own YouTube videos uh, since leaving CNET. And, you know, mainly his main bag, Logan, uh, old film producer, uh, film vault, the film vault producer. It would be nice if he was a film producer, too. But he uh, he reviews uh, electric bikes. and uh, It's like his gig. He's got his own channel now. He's got some good videos. I was watching him. One of them, he's leaving his uh, condo, condo number 237. Really? Oh, I was impressed. Yeah. That's commitment. <laughs> right? That's how much you love film. I mean, that's tough. If you're out looking for a place with your wife and, and that's like your must have. Mm -hmm. Is, it's got to be number 237. I'm amenable to almost any detail, <laughs> except... It's got to be on the second floor in the 37th unit on that floor. You mean this 237? Is this is an eight-unit condo? We're out. 
So yeah, he falls. Uh, the, the, the little boy falls from the sky and helps him defeat this this Minotaur, which is very creepy. I, have you you saw? I've not Time seen. Ban- no, I watched Time Bandits. Wait, this is fun. A this is the Terry, Gilliam Terry Gilliam's movie. Time Bandits. This is follow up to uh, Jabberwocky and or Holy Grail. I think either either or it's it's. I think it's his first private endeavor because he was co-directing before that anyways terry gilliam it's very very terry gilliam i watched it way too many times 1981 was when it was released and i was too young to be watching this uh this minotaur freaked me freaked me the fuck out did this week as well and Wait, watching who, who's the royal uh it's king agamemnon played by sean connery okay then not the minotaur no no, the Minotaur is what he's fighting out in the desert, right? And then the little boy, whose story it is, falls on... T- he's time-traveling, Brian, get that? And he falls on top of the Minotaur, helping uh, Sean Connery defeat the Minotaur. The only reason I know is Agamemnon was no, like no. a real person. No, he, he falls on top of Agamemnon. Oh. Agamemnon. Agamemnon, which startles the Minotaur. Mm. Now, the Minotaur is just a large, beastly man wearing a, a head of a real bull that is rotting, and oh, he my. makes these kinds of sounds. Ooh! That's, that's upsetting. Don't do that. While he's fighting Sean Connery, and you, as a child, I was thinking that's like a real creature, and he's making the creature sounds, and it fucked me up. So, anyways, Sean I Connery like is the really, really like nice guy. He's wearing you'd like this, like a Trojan helmet, yeah, uh, with like real horse hair, like the way that they used to do. And then he's like thankful for the boy falling on top of him, which fucked up the Minotaur, which allowed him to defeat the Minotaur. The boy too is a. Uh, Kind of disturbingly unfazed by the the savage death of the okay. Minotaur that happened right in front of his face, and then uh, Sean Connery goes on to uh, sorry King Agamemnon goes on to be like a father figure for him, uh, moving forward through through the rest of the film. Very likable, as you'd imagine. Okay, and Sean Connery was written in kind of as a joke uh, by Terry Gilliam and his writing partner. They they were thinking like, now you take off the, the helmet and who is it? And they're like, that'd be great if it was Sean Connery because this is Sean Connery at the height of Sean Conneryism, where he like he was coming off like seven double oh sevens, yeah, five, and maybe coming out of retirement. And then, around no, this in eighty one, right? he would have yeah, he would have been no. out out as Bond for a couple of years. Nothing yeah. but very serious roles for the most part, and you know he's that that actor, and uh, he was he heard about it oh, from ten years actually. Like you know, it's a small town, and like a producing partner was playing golf with him that day or something, and said, "Hey, you know, they're fucking around in the office, suggesting you be in this new Terry Gilliam movie." Turned out he was like a fan of uh, Holy Grail and. Mm. Uh, uh, Monty Python in general and associated uh, Terry Gilliam Isn't with it. And he's George like, yeah. Harrison involved with Yeah, this George movie? Harrison. How'd you know that? Well, George he Harris- famously produced that. I think Harrison might be the one who brought Sean Connery in. So, okay. You yeah. gotta see it. George Harrison. <laughs> I'm sure it lines up with my love of the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, for that. Crank, crank that down. I should watch that. Again, can I watch that? No, I don't want to get the strike with the copyright strike, but it's fucking good shit. You know, let me see if I can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Time bandits. I got to figure out how I can play clips uh, on the old video. I'm having too much fun with this video over here. Uh, especially now that I'm like two thirds of the screen. Should looking I see good. This? Should I see time bandits? You absolutely should see time bandits. What's the matter with you? Really? Fuck to the S. Can't watch with the kid though. Why? Does the bed get sucked no into setting? the closet it's or am much. I thinking of Poltergeist? That's it. No, that, that also happens in okay. Poltergeist, but uh, the kid and a lot mm. of the shit in his room gets sucked into the okay. closet. It happens in both. Okay. Time Bandits is streaming on HBO Max and the Criterion Channel. Now, I love this movie. I would love to watch it with you on our movie, you know, live movie, mm. watch along night, uh, film ball movie night, but it's just too good to, to sully to it for somebody who's it. never seen it. Yeah. All right, fair enough. All right. What's your number four there, Brian? Number four is the aforementioned 2007 film that I don't believe there's crossover on. Uh, however, uh, and this is a bit of technicality because although he is king, uh, Xerxes, played by Rodrigo Santoro in 300, uh, he uh, declares himself divine, so he is technically a god king. Is this Butler? No, no, no. This is uh, the, the, the enormously Persian tall... Uh, yeah, uh, with the nose ring? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. On the it, throne? It, it's like connected with a nipple or something. Yeah, yeah. It's something absurd. It's like a, uh, yeah, it's like a nose ring monocle or something. It really is. Chain, I yeah. loved how like all the all the different warring armies had like their own look, their own vibe, their own team, like yep. a spirit. That was kind of cool. It was like the warriors in that respect. It kind of was. Yeah. But that was only part of Baseball warriors. And- I hated everything else. Really? Yeah. I thought it's you liked this movie. I thought you liked it to a degree, like three over. stars. I liked uh, Sarah Silverman's joke about it. That's a very funny joke. It's a very good joke. I think of it all the time. Do you? I do. It's <laughs> hilarious. It's, it's a perfect, clever joke. It is a perfect, clever joke. She's so good. 
Gotta love her. Well, now you gotta tell people what it is. No, we don't have to. Oh, mean. What? We're giving credit. We're not stealing our jokes. And this is serious. Mean? It's not mean. Well, people are being teased right now. It's also very homophobic. It's homojokic. I'm a homojokic. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes. I'm going to start calling, uh, the, who's the guy that plays with the Jazz or the, the Grizzlies? Who? Jokic? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Herbie homo, Hancock. Homojokic. <laughs> okay. We the joke know. is. <laughs> Go ahead. It's called 300 because yeah. that's how gay it is on a scale of 1 to 10. Mm-hmm. It's very, very clever. She said that at MTV Movie Awards. Was that where it was? It was somewhere like that. I really can't remember. Mm. Okay. So, I, it's very funny. All right, Brad, Brad. Xerxes. Actually, it's not even homophobic, is it? No, homojoke. It's homojoke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a major joke. Huh. Hmm. We're not I mean, making fun of it is very or gay. being gay. We're acknowledging that it is it's very, very gay. Very, very gay, yeah. All right. Uh, my turn. Yeah, oh, please. this is a fun one. I love this one. Fun. I, fortunately, the boy watched this, this clip <laughs> with me. Just today, actually, I watched this one because I'm very familiar with it, but I just wanted it to be fresh <laughs> to make sure that uh, Edward Longshakes deserve yes. to be on my list. From Braveheart, he is uh, Edward Longshakes, King of England. Uh, he was uh, King of England from 1272 to 1307. Played by Patrick uh, McGuhan. That's, that's a good run for back in those days. M- yeah, not bad. And uh, you Patrick know, McGuhan. McGuhan, yeah. He uh, wasn't he's no he uh, with us. fucking Scotty, or was that James McGuhan? Fuck it. All right, dude, keep going. I'm looking. Mm-hmm. You good? Pray for the name of the movie. Mm-hmm. 1995, Brian. <laughs> so uh, this king. Longshanks was known as a hammer of the Scots, hammer of the Scots. He caused a lot of problems uh, and, and he hated the Scots and uh, he caused uh, some rebels to come after him. He was also involved in the Civil War. I, I did a whole lot of reading on this guy, but mainly it's that one scene that shows just how vicious he is with his son and his son's new advisor. Is this the one he throws out the window? Yes. yes. And uh, Atticus asked, why? Yeah. I didn't yeah, realize yeah. he was over my shoulder and he goes, I'm sitting there listening with my ear, you know, earbuds in, kind of chuckling, and I just hear, "Daddy, why, why do you throw him out the window?" <laughs> yeah, I literally heard that today, and I'm like, "Buddy, what are you? Shouldn't be looking at that." Did and he I, not finish his vegetables? I cut it away before, like they show the blood coming. He didn't out do of his, his homework. <laughs> but yeah, it's very, very uh, shocking, and I'll never forget first seeing this in the theater and seeing that, and just like going, "Oh my god, what the fuck? What was that? Was it like?" Like just ruthless. Of, speaking ruthless. of gay, was it de facto punishment for being gay? Or he didn't like the guy being in his ear chirping right. him. He was very mad. He was very upset with. Uh, was his son a feminine? Or I think yeah, his son was okay. definitely gay and was trying to help. And he had his new advisor, who was obviously his new boyfriend, uh, suggesting. You know, back then they were very upset if you couldn't sire a new, you know, mm-hmm. uh, lineage. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that you know, there's many things that went into this. We evil saw act. that with Ibrahim. But uh, yeah, Edward Longshanks uh, is my number four, uh, and he's uh, he's a, the malevolent, 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 I Malev, it is. Malev, Malevi. He's the uh, the mean uh, representation. He's malignant. I got I got a few meanies. I uh, got, mm. got some nice ones as well. Right. Oh, my number my number three is a meanie. Yeah, malevolent, malev. I believe malevolent, malevolent, malevolent. The, the revenant, the revenant, malevolent. All right, good. We are going down. We're circling the drain. We are. We're doing a later show than normal, and here's the good news. We're punchy. We're going to continue doing late shows for the foreseeable future. That's right. Someone's getting into hockey. A schedule change. You. A scheduling change has uh, demanded that we uh, do the show later on Tuesdays, like three hours later. So we'll see how this goes. All right. Number three. Oh, my God. You're going to be so angry. Why are you so pleased? The clip time? No. Actually. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of the clip. I'll take care of the Oh, there's a clip? clip. Uh, no, but I'll take care of the audio. Oh, I see. I'll take care of the audio. <laughs> From a film called Wrecked Ralph, Alan Tudyk, the very talented voice actor, voices King Candy. Are you doing Shrek? No, I'm doing King Candy. <laughs> a little Shrek-y. Hey, see if Penn Ad wants I'm very ha- happy that Tudyk is not here for this. Oh, my God. Can I you met imagine? Tudyk. I saw by. He was on Love Line. He was great. Yeah. Really funny. He's a talented dude. I pulled Does, him I pulled Deserves him much better than this. Pulled him aside after the show. Said, Have hey, you seen Wreck It Ralph? I want you to hear something. <laughs> you didn't do that. All right, go ahead. If there's a video game that you don't want to do, continue. If there's a you know a, a ride voiceover, please continue a your plush toy. Horrific interpretation. 
God, I'm such a dick. Uh, Happy birthday, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Happy birthday. Welcome to the Wreck of the Ralph experience. Still losing track. Mm. I've <laughs> I acknowledge. <laughs> he's, he's I doing the version of Shrek that get thrown out a window. <laughs> I acknowledge that my my imitations aren't great. Mm. That said, Shrek is not a cop here. Shrek is like a thick Scottish brogue. It sounds like Shrek. I don't want to give too much away, but uh, King Candy is the um, the villain of the film. All right. Hey, you just what's that? that? What you don't learn that until later? That's not true. It's halfway through each. Did Winchell, he get taken out by a sniper? Winchell, <laughs> don't, Winchell, <laughs> arrested. It's a little better. Mm. A little better. I thought it was a little more Shrek. Than God that. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. King Candy. Okay. He's the king. He is the king, yes. It's good to be the king. No, number one! What? What just happened? <laughs> oh, you gave away your number one? <laughs> it's, not, it's not on my list, but it'd be funny if it was. All right, uh, number... Clips for next one. Three for me is a movie that I had forgotten about, which is not a great sign uh, for the movie, however. It's not that kind of... Because it's so rich in history and uh, dense, but very, very good. And that is Mongol. Remember me uh, talking to you about Mongol? This no, is no, with no, John no, Wayne no. in it. No, 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 no. This is that's uh, Mongol. This is uh, Emperor Genghis Khan oh. and his rise, and uh, it is a fantastic movie. Two thousand seven is when it came out, and uh, I, I I think it's available in a few different places. I, I think. You sure it's not a uh, John Wayne and the Conqueror? I'm very <laughs> sure. mean. It's a different movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I can't believe this is a real movie. Why? It's just, it's just him with the mustache. Being being Genghis Khan. Oh no! Yeah, they're famous. The screen yeah, John John uh, John uh, John Wayne uh, went uh, as an Asian man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, extreme. <laughs> How is this allowed? Extreme yellow face. <laughs> How is this allowed? Yeah. Well, they're like, uh, hey, time has not been kind to of them. <laughs> John Wayne's getting a little jaundice. Maybe he can finally play an Asian oh, man. fellow. Hey, connecting. How dare you connecting oh. it to an earlier uh, discussion? Sean Connery also uh, played. Went undercover as James Bond as an Asian man, like oh, a so Japanese he was because I haven't seen that one yet. And that, I, I want oh, to. It's, um, you only live twice. Okay, and it's a middling James Bond movie. But I need but to see they that scene. Are. They I are not. To. They are. How dare you? Uh, it's not bad, like Live and Let Die, but it, it's uh, it's not live good. And let die. You only live. Uh, right. Look up uh, James Bond Asian man. No, <laughs> James Bond Asian. Let's, well, man. Not. I feel like we did or this Sean Connery Asian. Let's uh, let's rock it to a break. Uh, Mongol. Uh, Are you done Mongol? I, yeah. I don't, <laughs> Mongol's very, very good. It's dense, like I said. Uh, it's, it could be worse. Time has not been kind. Directed by Sergei uh, He's also a Badrov. six man. Sergei <laughs> Badrov. Sergei Badrov uh, directed this. And uh, it's it's all made with uh, Asians and, and, and unrecognizable actors to you and I. Uh, but it was very, very uh, compelling. Uh, very well told, and it tells a story what most of us are not really familiar with. And it, it painted Genghis Khan not as a just a brutal savage, but as a you know an actual man of the people. And uh, I really like that Mongol. And I, it is one of these movies that has not come to mind for quite some time. Is it a foreign? It's a foreign film. Yes, yes. yeah, yeah, foreign language film. Uh, and it was up for uh, an Oscar. It was up for an Oscar. Which was it really? Delight you, right? Yeah. Oh no, I got best foreign it. language film of the year. Oh, I didn't. I missed that one from two thousand. Seven. Seven. That was the in the infancy of the film vault. Nope. Well, I mean, well, I mean, in podcast. Form. Were we doing? No, we weren't. Oh even no, podcasting we were. We were on three two HD. One or right before three yeah. two HD. I think we started that in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. Those are terrible episodes. Those are great episodes. Oh. God, I would get angry. I got so mad when we get shuffled from one studio to the next. And someone just walk in. Yeah, and then that was when I uh, Bonaduce was wandering around, and I was commenting on him all the time, and so were you. Heel boy. Heel boy. Look at him. What, what happened to Bonaduce? Where is he? He got sick. Yeah. Well, no, he he, got like really he, sad. he uh, as of a couple of months ago, he like he he had some mystery illness. Mm. Yeah. Cocaine's well, a mystery illness. What's up? Let's, uh, what's let's up, Bonaduce? Take a uh, quick. Coming break. up next, <laughs> all the long-awaited Amazon purchases. I'm um, going to start this off, not with a per well, sort of with a purchase, but more of a PSA. Uh, Amazon gives us 
descriptions of the item, a link to the item, uh, the price paid, and like how much you made. That's all. We don't know who you are. We don't know where it's shipped to. Uh, we don't get any personal information. And so I'm looking at the list of uh, purchases, and there's one just for the first time ever in, in the history of me doing this, just a blank space with a, do- with a dollar amount next to it. And someone bought two of something worth $109 each that I don't know what it is. Did they choose not it's, to say? No, it's, it's not clickable. It's not, to, and I can't investigate. I can't, I, I have no idea what it was. So hmm. if that was you. Silk Road who, over here. Who bought two of something mm-hmm. for $109.90 each to be, uh, yeah, I think it's each. Yeah, probably it is a glitch. Each. It's probably a glitch, right? Probably is, but I would like not this person. Read too much. But I would like this person to uh, know that I, that I uh, tried and I would like to acknowledge your purchase. Mm-hmm. But I can't. Mm-hmm. Things I can't acknowledge include... Someone got a uh, SanDisk Professional 12 terabyte G RAID 2 Enterprise Class desktop drive. Christy was giving me shit of how hard I hit my K's. Like if I say book, I have that. You've always done that. It's yeah, I know, been. but that's just how that, you got to hit the K. You don't have to. I take my time when I talk. You don't have to do any of that, mm-hmm. really. I mean, it's all <laughs> unnecessary. Xbox Series X was purchased. Three Samsung one terabyte portable SSDs. Lux Luxalon. Uh, big banger. Tennis string reels. It's clever. Uh, Lamont Color Q Pro 7 uh, digital pool water test kit. I also hit my T's. Boise multi use print and copy paper. Enfamil Gentilese baby formula. Oh, I remember the guy or, or girl, whoever it was, I used to buy the baby formula like every week and a week and I would acknowledge like they're, they're reloading on their uh, baby formula. Hoarding. They obviously uh, grew up. Oh, uh, probably. that's how time works. Man. Yeah. They're off formula at this point. They're child. Yeah. Hope your baby is doing well or your young child or not so young child. Turns out a fire HD 10 Jesus, tablet. What just happened? <laughs> remember, the, remember those people that would buy baby clothes all the time? They don't buy them anymore. Their baby's probably not a baby yeah, anymore. Yeah, but this pertains to this. Baby clothes probably don't fit that child any longer, Amazon so they're no longer buying care. baby clothes. Nicotine uncoated gum. Maybe they're chewing the gum. You know that people that buy that the gum? They Victor- don't buy the cigarettes anymore because they're chewing the gum now. Victorian picture frame by <laughs> wholesalearchframes.com. Amazon Aero mesh Wi-Fi router. Hey, I just got one of those yesterday. 12-quart stock pot. Uh, compost tumbler bin. Uh, two... Our science Neubauer. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> this is a blood testing kit. Uh, hand, I don't know what that word is. Handwritten rattan laundry basket. My uh, brother toner cartridges were picked up, as was a Royal Canaan small puppy. Royal? Dry dog food. Good one. Uh, Panasonic and a Loop Pro AA rechargeable batteries. Elk and Friends. Kids and toddler cups, two solar powered portable chargers, the world of Beverly Cleary collection, 15 book set, uh, mix our barbecue cooking grates, Scott Essential 100% light recycled fiber toilet paper, and, uh, and, uh, and, and treats. <laughs> Glandex, oh my, Glandex anal gland soft chew treats with what? pumpkin for dogs. What? I guess they help your dog oh, express the anal the glands. Anus. It's terrible. Oh. Yeah, it helps out the vet, or hopefully, because some people learn like to do it on their own. Massaging, yeah. or what? Oh, it's foul stuff that comes out of there, too. You gotta express the anus. Here are the moves that I clicked through. This is the last time I talked it. Somebody clicked through and got Grindhouse Death Proof. Thanks for doing that. The Messenger, the story of Joan of Arc, was clicked through. As well as Step Brothers Unrated, The Book of V Lives click through, as well as Matilda, Enemy at the Gates. Brian loves that sex scene. He enjoys that sex scene with the pretty, bulging pretty, eyes pretty in the hot. sleeping bag. Pretty, pretty hot. The Last Boy Scout. Was, <clears throat> it's easy, me. buddy. The Last Boy Scout was clicked through, as well as Milk Money, Grumpier Old Men, A League of Their Own, Come Back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. You ever seen that? No, but not. I don't like the long title. It's too much. It's asking too much, right? It's indulgent. It's like, you know what? You want to see my movie? You have to say a very yeah. long thing. If I'm bored reading the title, I don't want to even bother. I get it. halfway through. I get to the five and dime. I'm like, they don't call them five and dimes anymore. You know why? Because nothing costs five or, or di- mm. a, a dime anymore. Isn't that crazy? That's what these 80 are. years have passed. They that's were called a nickel, nickel and dime place because that's where you could get yeah. things for a nickel and a dime. It's like, and not, it's like uh, you're nickel and dime to be to death. It's like, man. The 99 cent store is fucked with inflation, too. What are they going to do? true. Or the dollar and nine cents store. 
Uh, Mother was clicked. Mother was clicked through as well as Zombie Land. It comes at night. I forgot about it comes at night. I come in. Brian. The firm was clicked through as well as Waterworld. Ad Astra, Primal Fear, DC League of Super Pets, as well as Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Fuck to the yes with the dragon. I love that dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Love that movie. You seen it? Oh, fuck yeah. It was a mm. great movie. Very uh, Jason Jason Scott Lee played uh Bruce Lee and he was fantastic. Oh. He was also on Map to the World. Nice. Map of the World. Map to the Maps World. Maps of the Stars. Nope. Different, very different movie. <laughs> oh, we didn't say anything about Jean Luc Godard. No longer with us. This is the time to do it in the Amazon read. Probably the most uh <laughs> buried part of the program, so we should probably not do that. All right. Uh, back to the program. It's a popular little number. Who's saying this? That's on your cheat sheet. Come on, I don't want to click on things. I believe it is. Oh, oh, is, this, is this still Andy Corbett? Andy Corbett. Nice. Is she new? I, I recognize the name. Yeah, I went through for names I hadn't around. heard in a while, so. She's been around. Okay. Good stuff. That's the wisest choice. I mean, choice. new to us is what I meant. Wisest choice. No, no, not, new to, no, not new to us. All right, go ahead, Brian. Let's rock it. Sean Luc Godard did. Oh, yeah, Jean-Luc Godard, Brian's favorite uh, French New Wave uh, now director. Who, now, who is he? He's a uh, first baseman for the uh, San Diego Padres. If you said Montreal Expos, I would have bought it. Oh, or the Montreal Canadiens, like any kind of hockey player. Mm-hmm. He actually, yeah, the Penguins had a guy named Godard pretty for a while. Really? Yeah, Jean-Luc Godard was one of the, uh, the forefathers of the uh, French New Wave, Brian. And uh, I, I never connected friends. with his I work. His Breathless was his big one that was uh, forced my way uh, while in film school, and I did not connect with it. He, he, he makes a lot of uh, stuff that is very... Uh, Inaccessible to rubes such as myself or the uh, the, the Philistines uh, out there, which are many of us and myself included. I, I never really got on myself on a, on a Jean Luc Godard kick. Was he the, Was he one of the ones who went from film critic to film director? No, you know Francois Truffaut and okay. his Four Hundred Blows, which I did. I did like Four Hundred Blows. I've seen that like three times probably. I did not love it though, like everyone else did. But yeah, Francois Truffaut, man, he had some cone. He's like, mm-hmm. he's like, he's like, kept talking shit about everyone's movies. And it was back in the day where like the the the, the filmmakers were like, hey, you don't like what we're making? We'd like to see you do better. And he's like, yeah, maybe I will. Yeah. Apparently, he maybe did. Maybe I will. He did film criticism before his filmmaking. Uh, Jean-Luc Godard. Yeah, that's, oh. that's what I'm reading here. I'm not an expert, obviously, right. on the man. Well, Francois Truffaut is the one who's famous for it. Maybe, <sighs> maybe, perhaps, I guess. Jean-Luc Godard mm-hmm. as well. I guess. Good. I know you don't How read. Did it? you ever read Hitchcock Truffaut? Um, no, but there's a movie. Really? That I plan on um, hearing from you because it's like essentially an article. Oh, cool. What's it called? Francois Truffaut. <laughs> there is a documentary uh, of the book. Uh, yes, Hitchcock Truffaut no. came out in 2015. Yeah. I can't believe you haven't caught up with that article yet. Uh, no, I've heard good things about it. Like they really, you know, break things down. It's a book, it's not an article. But I'm not a massive fan of either one of those guys. Hitchcock? Yeah. Oh, that's you right. You're that. not. That's yeah. No, you're right. It hasn't come up in a while. I don't dislike him. It's just not my aesthetic. It's not what I look for mm. in a movie. I need. Uh, I need more. You need, he lacks personality. I mean, is that is that? I. That's one of the most insane things you've ever said. Not him as a as an artist. I understand what you're going. The after. the characters in his movies are stiff too stiff for me they they don't they're not they I get mean, scared and there's like thrill elements but they're not they don't have pizzazz they're I not disagree. funny they're not in his best movies like rear window vertigo and especially psycho these are rich characters yeah i'd give you psycho for sure but they just yeah, jimmy stewart in rear window i mean he's sitting there he's bringing a, a lot to window it. Yeah. And they're I, also I, controlled on a soundstage. There's I will meet you location. halfway and say there are a number of Hitchcock movies where the acting is not the strongest element of the movie, but his best movies, I think, feature strong performances. All right. Do you think any of that was his directing style, though? He was famous he for treat treating like actors like cattle. Like yeah. He would like, make them do it, supposedly, you know, 50 takes. Yeah, so did Kubrick. Is it? Well, there you go. But well, also no. He thought that they were disposable, and he he didn't. He thought he just wanted them to read what he had written down for them, and he didn't let them do their own thing. And I think that's the main difference. I think Kubrick allowed some actors that he trusted to do their own thing, and he got richer performances. I, that's inter- so off the top of my head, and you're the expert, but I would I would posit or at least theorize that uh, Kubrick, like Hitchcock, did the, the performances were often not the best parts of his movies. But in certain movies, the performances are excellent. Like in the shot, 
Well, The Shining has both, good and bad. I think but most like of his 2001, movies the performances were neither here nor there. Hal killed it. <laughs> You're right. Hal did kill it. Yeah, but that's Hal not did. relying on an actor's performance. Yeah, 2001 is probably the worst uh, example. Even like one that I don't love, which is uh, fucking Barry Lyndon. I mean, there's there's some over the top. <laughs> but then A Clockwork Orange, it lives and dies on Malcolm McDowell's performance. And if we're talking about like working in the studio system, which we weren't, but we are right now because I just brought it up, Spartacus, like, there's some really over the top fun performances in there that I don't think Hitchcock would have allowed because mm. it would have well, been well. There's Doctor Strange Love, which yeah, that's all. Like okay, no. what do I, I even I Pass the Gloria, people, I wouldn't say is, has any masterful performances in it. It's a technical wonder. It's it's amazing, but yeah, well, that's. I mean, the the, the evil commander was pretty good. And the, yeah, but you're right. They, there are some, he only made thirteen, and they're not all. They don't all have characters that really sing, but a lot of them do. The ones that I really sure. respond to do, and uh, I don't well, know. Oh, Full Metal Jacket. Probably the popular with the most intriguing, number of intriguing characters. I've, I've wanted, I, I think Rope is one of my favorite Hitchcock movies that's not called Psycho, and Psycho is just, mm. you know, who doesn't love Psycho, and mm. it does so many things, but like, it's, uh, I, I'm not making any friends here. People love their fucking Hitchcock, but a lot of the time, Vertigo in the theater, and it's you know it was it was good to see in the theater, but it didn't age well. I don't think there's a lot really? of like stuff. Oh, I think mm. I need to go back. Maybe I need to go back. No, I don't want to go back. <laughs> Watch the long party. No, Vertigo. Uh, it was just uh, can Vertigo be streamed? They, a lot of them just felt like plays that were well filmed. You know what I mean? There's just something stiff about them about oh, his his movies. Vertigo on Peacock. I used to watch the, uh, when I was a kid, I'd watch the uh, TV show. That was pretty good. How Fred Hitchcock presents. Yeah, that was pretty good shit. But then he had nothing to do with that, right? That wasn't it. He was presenting like it, and he was on there, and it showed his big lips in the caricature. You're right, he did present it. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there in the title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, come on. I, don't, I didn't feel like uh, doing a, a jag. We're, wow. we're trying to pay uh, respects to Jean-Luc Godard. Next thing you know, I'm bad-mouthing. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that we even got I'm here. not even bad-mouthing him. I'm just <laughs> explaining why he doesn't. I don't respond to him like uh, many people do, and I wish that I did, all right? It's like uh, I don't like shellfish. I always go back to this. It's like, oh, I do. I love shellfish, but I, I feel bad for people who don't. You know, it's like don't get mad at someone who doesn't like lobsters. Just feel bad for him. Well, you know feel what you do like? I was going to say, I have a clip for number two. <laughs> Avery, in your estimation, will, ang- will Anderson be angry? And if so, how much? Oh, certainly, and more than three stars. Okay. Please keep in mind that Anderson was, I, and I found, <laughs> I, uh, tangential to this, I, uh, in researching this, I found an old email from Giovanni, a very long email. You're going you're to find it hard to believe. No, not you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from back in the day when I, First, describe this scene and character to you, and you were delighted. He you was actually delighted. Laughed. I you can't actually laughed out that. loud. Is it Starscream? Starscream! I'm in! <laughs> I love this idea. Starscream from 1986 is uh, Transformers the movie. So, um, we're, uh, we're, uh, so um, <laughs> Starscream uh, assumes command of the Decepticons when uh, Megatron is mortally wounded. He, um, he ejects him and all of his followers off of a, a space shuttle. Uh, in, in the middle of space uh, to, uh, out to die uh, because they're dead weight and they're holding them back. So. I still have not seen this, so I, I don't have a whole lot of context, okay, but I'm familiar he, with the scene. He, he's There's a, a sniper. He decides uh, they're, uh, you know, Megatron's time well, is, is over. This is the end of the movie. He's mortally, <laughs> oh, please. He's mortally wounded and uh, he must go. So off the spaceship he goes into the uh, vast of space and uh, uh, Starscream, delighted now that he is uh, the leader of the Decepticons, crowns himself king. You thought that was delightful. And uh, his reign is not long. It actually lasts um, 29 seconds. Mm-hmm. We're going to hear the entirety of Starscream's uh, <laughs> reign as king because uh, he's at a coronation ceremony, again, for himself. For himself, yeah. Where he, uh, he, ha- he has a crown placed on his head. Right. He's a s- <laughs> I like his smug face. This is a sentient transforming robot, you see. And he has a crown placed on his head. And uh, there's trombonists, there's trumpeters, and uh, he, he, he tires at their... Um, uh, at the delay, well, much like I'm, I'm, I'm delaying right now. And anyway, let's hear the entirety of Starscream's reign. Is it That's 29 good. seconds? Because I'm, I'm good. It's with exactly that. 29 cool. seconds. My fellow Decepticons, <laughs> as your new leader, I. Who disrupts my coronation? He's wearing a crown. 
Coronation Starscream. This is bad comedy. Megatron? Is that you? Here's a hint. Turns into a cannon. Destroys Starscream. There's a light show. And he has turned to dust. There it is. The Starscream era. Go over too soon. Long may he reign. He didn't come back in any form ever. Oh, he definitely came back. They, huh. they brought them all back because the reaction to uh, so many iconic, popular characters was negative, as you can imagine, uh, dying. Uh, and so they brought them all back. What did uh, what a Big Boy do for this one? Hmm. Big Boy? Yeah. Wasn't... Uh, Orson Welles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was the voice of Unicron, the planet that ate other planets. Hmm. Speaking of eating Timely. other planets, uh, like uh, my, my brain is being eaten in this hot kitchen. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, what is the temperature right now, Brian? Is it hot again? Hold I on. mean, in what is you're, eighty-seven? You're, you're you're hot, right? It is hot in here, right? It's warmer again. When does the exact same temp it was set to? And be? that that is the thermostat that's out there, which is nice and cool out there. Not so nice and cool in here. You think the thermostat? Yeah, it only gets cool where the thermostat is. No, I think that you're getting a reading from where the oh. thermostat is located, which is not in the, the kitchen. You you go out there, it's like walking into a wall nope. of heat in here. It really is. It's, you're so it's a fragile. Thermocline. You're so fragile. I really am a fragile little, little guy. It's the opposite of that big uh, vegetable room in Costco. Okay. We're gonna get thirty. Oh, I love going in there, and pretending the to leave Atticus yeah. in there. I've been doing that since he was like one and a half, too. All right, buddy, I love you. <laughs> Have fun with the eggs. <laughs> I start walking. No, Daddy, no. <laughs> so much fun <laughs> fucking with him. We got thirty minutes of cool air being pumped in. Oh, tight. Um, hopefully, the show is over long before that. Number two for me. I got a lot more to say. Is also uh, Boss Star Scream. A funny one. Mm. And it's a good one, and it's uh, filled with levity, and it's a movie that I absolutely love. And God, was I disappointed when Coming to America Two uh, rained down on us because Coming to America was fantastic, directed by John Landis, uh, starring Eddie Murphy as Prince Akeem, and uh, Brian. He comes to America. Mm -hmm. I love this king because he's tired of having all of the yes women and yes, yes men surrounding him. He wants to find a woman worthy of a king. Unlike many people who I know uh, that I've come across in my life, I don't like when people just want to be surrounded by yes men. And there's so many powerful people that just want that. It's weird. And I guess it's horrible. an ego thing. Well, it's terrible. It must be an ego thing where like they think that everything they say is right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, there's no hazard in it. But Akeem is uh, self-conscious enough and uh, self-aware, uh, self-aware uh, enough to, uh, to understand that that's not a good way to live your life. And so he, even though he gets daily Royal penis washings, he does. He gets one at the basketball game as well out here in New York, if you recall. Oh, yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah. He does. The Very inappropriate. Yeah. Very inappropriate. And he stands up to cheer it, but it's only <laughs> halftime. Yes! Yes! Because he's uh, climaxing there, Brian, in the arena. Uh, oh, is that what's happening? I thought he was arena. Just excited. But yeah, he, he decides Your to arena? Come, come with our senior hall to Call Queens okay. to find his new queen, which is kind of genius. That's good. Uh, Prince Akeem. Uh, you gotta, you gotta love the uh, that movie. You gotta love the uh, the kingdom of it. Uh, I mean, the, the, the royalty he, of it he's, all. He's recognized by uh, by one of the in uh, the hallway. Yeah, that's right. Yes, in the uh, one of the, the one of the guys at the stadium? ushers. One of the yeah, uh, no, one of the uh, coke. He's selling coke. He's selling vendor. Co uh, vendor. Yes, thank you. He's selling uh, Coca Cola. Could be Pepsi. Could be RC. Mm. Probably, but it's mm. probably probably Coca Cola. Well, they're new. It was not branded. It wasn't branded. Mm. Soda. It was soda. Pop. Yeah. You know what I didn't like about mm. that scene? They're all standing in line. And the guy comes up and he realizes that it's uh, his king. Prince Akeem. Yeah, because he's from he's from that part of Africa. So he gets down and he puts his Coke uh, tray down and he's bowing. And, you know, there's a, a long line of men waiting to uh, relieve themselves. Mm. There's just people everywhere. All the Cokes, no covers. Mm. Oh, just back in the day. open yeah. vessels Sodas. of liquid yeah. collecting anything Any that droplets. is heavier than air. Yeah. Coming down. He's got it down on the ground and he's bowing over it. Oh. Uh, can you imagine? You know what I don't like either? Go into an arena, go into any kind of sporting event or concert, Please. and you see people, they take their $18 beers, which they cost now, $18. They go into the bathroom with them, which you kind of have to do because yeah, that thing costs. What else are you going to do? Costs like, you know, price of like a gram of Coke for a goddamn Coca Cola, I mean a beer. But they walk in and those things are open. And anything that's in the bathroom is just raining down into the beer. They set them on the urinal. It's the least of their worries. And they set on the urinal and then they walk out with them. And that's that's the why you got to put it up above. Oh, you got to not, not take it in there. But then you risk, you know, uh, losing like a 20 spot. Yeah, now what? You, can, mm. you know those those hot air uh, dryers too that you need to dry your hands oh in there? Oh my God. Weaponizing whatever's in the air. Yeah, whatever's in the air, they just suck in and blow it onto your 
what moments ago clean hands. <laughs> well, there's no, no or clean. under your feet if you're not paying attention too. Yeah, well, you I'm talking the Dyson, Dyson blades. That's what I'm talking about. If you're not paying attention though, those there's some I saw the Dyson where there's no catch tray. Yeah, it's just <laughs> what I'm straight saying? to the floor. the air that is pulling in to blow on yeah, your hands no, yeah. is the filthy air in the in the men's room or the ladies' lady room. All right, number two for me is uh, Prince Akeem. Number one for me came up recently on the show, and I uh, was delighted to have a chance to talk once again about Caligula. He's half of my number one as well. He's an emperor, but I think that counts as royalty in old Rome. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely royal. He's definitely a monarch, he's right? A monarch, or yeah. Ruler. The, the ruler of the land. Yes. Ruler of the world. The one and only that point. ruler, yes. Mm. Caligula, 1979, played by, uh, of course, Malcolm, the aforementioned Malcolm McDowell. I have existed from the morning of the world, and I shall exist from, from the morning of the world, he says. <clears throat> and I shall exist until the last star falls from the night. Although I have taken the form of Gallius Caligula, I am all men as I am no man, and therefore I am a god. We <laughs> mentioned a quote. The, we mentioned the festing of the groom. That that was one of many mm. uh, egregious uh, examples of just abuses of power uh, as king or emperor, as it were. Um, he does. Uh, he decapitates his uh, lead bodyguard with. Or lead advisor with what can only be described as a headlong mower. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a quite the elaborate uh, uh, game uh, mm-hmm. that was put together, board game as it were, uh, literally, right? literally a, a board giant game. board game that people got to enjoy, uh, watching the heads being lopped off by. I guess that that was drawn up in papers, if I mm-hmm. recall. Yeah, apparently this, it was a real thing, but I don't think they actually ever built oh, it. Oh, interesting. I think it was just a concept. Let me just Google headlong mower now. It, you Google Caligula, it's the first thing to uh, pop up on YouTube. Really? The only scene worth watching in Caligula. That's what the uh, comment is. I disagree. Is, the, uh, the, the title. All right, so that's my number one. Uh, coupled with <clears throat> coupled with uh, uh, the King's Speech, uh, number uh, King George the Sixth, who is probably the most human of all of the, uh, the leaders that I have, the, mm. the monarchs that I have on my list. Uh, he was the most flawed and the most sympathetic, uh, played by Colin Firth. I like that King's Speech quite a bit. Uh, I like it more than me. It, yeah, I do. I would have gone with uh, with Helena Bonham Carter. I never saw. Oh, are you talking about from King's Speech? Yeah. Well, we're not doing the ladies. Okay. Yeah, we're not doing the ladies. Touche. I was thinking about a different uh, a different movie that I I can't tell you how many of these movies about stuffy old monarchs I've never ever taken a gander mm-hmm. at. Some of them I have. I'm like, well, let me watch the trailer. Oh, I did see that, and uh, one eye out the other. I just don't have the wherewithal to watch them. You know, uh, tell people what to do and live in the lap of luxury. I just be, be I, I hate so many things about it. Avery, you seen uh, Caligula? I have not. Are you not familiar with the headlong more? I am not. I mean, it's it's exactly what we're describing. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. Yeah. So King George the uh, the, the sixth. Uh, I watched the entire opening scene again uh, this week for it just, it's just so good. And I just how nervous the poor guy is like you, you really feel for him. And it's just, it's just a, the, the backdrops are great. Mm-hmm. And the, the set design is great. It's a very quiet, understated movie, but it really John Madden firing. It's peak of John Madden list. It is a, uh, yeah. If he, if he coached uh, the Raiders to suit oh, two Jesus Super Bowls. Christ, and- dude, it's, so right there. Don't say things that are right there. Bri, bri. He also played for the devil. The hockey player it's named right John there. Madden. It's right there. No, it's not. Because it's he's on the cover of a video game as well. He's also a lead singer for many uh, video games. Yeah. What's the, what's he's the also dead. Band? John De- Madden. Death Cab for Cutie. No, his name's not John Madden. No, there's no. What, what's Postal the, Service. No, the Joel and Benji Madden. That's a the fucking flavor. Charlotte. Of Good Charlotte. Thank you. Charlotte. <laughs> Oh, I'm about to read Charlotte's Web to the boy. Very excited. Very excited. I wonder if I'll cry. I wonder if I'll cry. Why are you reading it? Because it's like a childhood book that uh, my mom read to me, and uh, I read to the boy every night when I'm not doing the film ball can with I you. T- can I you tell a you? Good Night Moon? Oh, we did that, yeah, years ago. Can can I, I, a little can too I old I for that now. tell you something? I should break that back out, though. Yeah, go ahead. Upsetting about Tessa? Mm, many um, things I could tell you. This upsets me uh, upsetting greatly. Upsetting I, I, I feel she might be evil. Oh. Uh, because... Um, she knows now that I uh, can't get through the giving tree without crying. Uh-huh. And then now she asked me to read it with an evil grin on her face, like, Daddy, you're going to cry. 
Like, yes, I probably will cry mm. actually if I read this to you. Okay, there's a book we're reading tonight. <laughs> she knows that it upsets me. That's 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 rude. Very Caligula. That's right. Head lawnmower. I read the Star Child to uh, Atticus from Come On, Come On, which you still have not seen. Jesus Christ, Bri Bri. Star Star Child. And uh, I, much like uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character in Come On, Come On, he cries and, and I cry a little bit. Atticus cries too and then gets mad at me and tells me to get out of his bed. Because he, li- he's, he's li- he lives, he sleeps on the top bunk. It's not a bunk bed, it's just that there's a top level and then underneath you like, have like his, you know, it's like another little area. There's no bed under there. It doesn't matter. Well, the point is that I have to climb up a little like, ladder to get up there, and then I'm laying in this tiny little twin bed with him, and I and I read to him, and when he when he tells me to get out because he's embarrassed and upset that we're both crying, uh, it's very awkward. <laughs> I uh, I want to see that movie, but I also want to wait till next year so I can put it on my best oh I see. non-new movies. Assuming you're gonna like it that much. It's true. Yeah, but to have a chance. I mean, I think it was number three for me of the year. I fucking love. Come on, come on, love it. All right, let's get going. Not nominated for any Oscars, so it's not on my radar. Absurd. Absurd. You sure it wasn't up for anything? I feel it goes up. <laughs> it might have been. It was up for something. Okay. All right, Avery. Uh, I think Anderson won gambling, so let's just skip. Did we do? Uh, oh, oh, the listener top did five. You yes. Did you do all yeah, yeah, I did. It was a uh, King's Speech and. Oh uh, yes, yes, yes. Two yes, very yes, similar yes. characters. The listener list compiled oh, by. Uh, sorry to cut you off, but yeah, come on, come on. Uh, up for a BAFTA, but not uh, an Academy Award. Just one more example of how the Academy just continues to get it more wrong as the years pass. They I mean, I wish they what. had nominated it for something. I would have seen it. You would have. God, it's a good movie. It's my favorite Joaquin performance ever. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Listener list compiled by Jordan Wolf. Number five, Mufasa from Lion King. Mm hmm. Number four, King Ralph from King Ralph. I have not seen Same. that King Ralph Everyone, with John Goodman. People like that movie. Should I see we see King Ralph? I mean, I remember when it came out, and I'm just like, I will never see that piece of shit. I remember, you know, you were in hipster did nights. They came the same years as oh, the year after uh, Goodfellas. For God's sake, ninety one, ninety one. Mm. Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Mm. Number two, Lone Star from Spaceballs. There you go. Mm. Spoiler alert. And number one, because the uh, listeners, there was no gender in the title, uh, is Princess Leia hmm. from Star Wars. Sixteen point seven of the overall, twenty eight percent of the top five. So Lone Princess Star number Leia, Lone Star number Very one. Good. I'm eliminating princesses. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Divine next week because she's a drag queen. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, Scream good. Queens for me. Oh, okay, cool. Scream All right. Queen. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh, I almost Ooh. unplugged everything. That's that's. Oh, Why geez, would you do that? That would have been horrific. Why don't you stop and save it right now? No, let's not do that <laughs> right at the end. All right, let's go. Are we gambling? What are we gambling on? Yes, we are. Well, we gambled last week on Pinocchio. Pinocchio. The movie and story America was clamoring for. Yeah, we all need it. Uh, Anderson guessed 65, Brian guessed 74. With 121 reviews, the actual Rotten Tomato score is 30%. Yes. Wait, making Andy the winner. 30%? 33 30. but I think it dropped to 28 now. All right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, preordained. He'll be watching Funny Pages. Funny I will papers. get you a link. Funny Pages. And, uh, I mean, it's it's got uh, Todd Salon's uh, vibe. You ever seen American Splendor? Yeah, I love Marcus Blender. Do you? Yeah, I do. I this like is like that, but I like this a lot more. Oh, really? I didn't love oh. American Splendor. Okay. I like this one a lot more. Uh, it's definitely something. I have, a, I, have a, I have a drop or two from that movie. I consider myself a nude. Okay, I think you might like this a lot. Okay. Or you might hate it. There's a lot of unpleasantness in this movie uh, from the get. From the get, like you, you can tell that you're just like not from the jump. From the jump, yeah. It's just like okay, there's a lot of unpleasantness to look at. Love the lead kid. Uh, a lot, a lot to love here. All right, let's get back into it with the gambling. I'm a comeback for me this week. Gambling for the week is the previously mentioned Barbarian. Ah, uh, really? That's where we're going. Do you have any really. backup choices? No, it was the uh, end week. It's just there's no names in this. There's no, know, like, you know, there's no rec- nothing recognizable. It's a, I understand that people are responding to it yeah, favorably. How are you responding? I, I, I'm not. <laughs> this has been recommended to me. Someone said it was good, so I feel like you should know the same information that Why I Why don't know. we do Clerks 3? Ooh. Does it have a Rotten Tomatoes score? Is it coming out? I can check. Came out, come, check come oh, out. Oh, it's available today. now in Fathom Came out events. today as we record Fathom this. Fathom Events. Came out today as we record this. Don't let me see. 
my buddy Eric Holmes. And there is wants, a score, so we can let's do, do that. Wants me to because jump I'm actually on a podcast where he's going to be reviewing it tonight because he's actually at the uh, screening right nice. now. Nice. I don't know if I'll be doing that or not. <laughs> Do you want to give the Barbarian anyway? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's in the 90s. I would have guessed 82 for Barbarian. I would have guessed 90, 91. But we're not doing 92. it. 92. 92. So, okay. It's dodged honorable, a bullet there. Honorable right here. Uh-huh. But we're not doing that. Fuck that shit. We're doing Clerks 3. Clerkies. Because <sighs> we, we all need a Clerks 3. As much as we need a Pinocchio 9. And a Tusk 2. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey, you know what? He's got his niche. He's got his built-in audience. He's got audience. an audience. Yeah, he Keep can do what he wants. Man. All right, Clerks 2. I remember I, at the live show, at the After Disaster live show at the Improv, he 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 was uh, he did the show right before we did our show, and I remember re- asking who was there for the Rotund Man show, I think I called him, and I got some booze. People were like, people are passionate for, for the old Kevin Smith. Yeah, that's true. Passionate. He's got like his own, uh, what are they called, Killer Bees? Beyonce's? Oh, the, bee- the, oh, the Beehive. The Beehive, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I, I like Kevin Smith. He was a very nice man when he wasn't napping, when he was on Loveline. He literally took a nap on the couch every three-minute break that we had. Th- uh, three, We had three breaks an hour, and he took a nap each of those breaks, and the longest break was four and a half minutes. He was the guest I might have been most excited or up there of most excited to meet as in my time as a call screener. He signed my uh, book that I had of his and uh, personalized it. I thought it was going to be your book. They didn't sign I mean, my I, book. He signed his book. Yeah, and he personalized it. What did he say? Yeah. Uh, it was funny actually because he wrote the foreword. Two ball Bryan's. No, it was a color. It was two. It was, was two crazy. screenplays. It was Clerks and Chasing Amy, and he wrote the foreword for the book. And in the foreword, he just wrote lies in capital letters and arrows all over mm. the place, which is funny because he wrote it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. Very good. So what's your uh, what's your? Oh well, I have a number. Do you? So do I. On three? Yep. Fuck. Wow. All right. One, two, 41. 65. Oh, a little higher. I was going to go 38. Really? I don't think this will be bad. I just think no, it'll it's be. No, it's going to be awful. Really? Yeah. I just think it'll be made for the fans and, you know, the average person will be like, what the fuck is this? I think the average critic will be like, we don't need this. Mm. But Kevin Smith, I think, appeals to critics. Does he? We'll oh, find out. Okay, so. 65. They really did not like Tosk, and I did. <laughs> Anderson <laughs> guessed 41. Brian guessed 65. With 76 reviews, the current run Tomato score is 68%. Nice. <laughs> I'm happy for him. I'm actually happy for him. If I have to lose, uh, I'm glad that I'm losing to somebody who's doing his own thing. Me? Uh, and not, not to someone. As a result of somebody. Yes, yes, yes. All right, cool. Maybe Let I'll have to have see this. It's my I don't think I've seen Clerks God's 2. Sake. I don't think I've seen Clerks 2. Have I? You're not messing Have much. I seen it? I couldn't get through Clerks 1, to be honest. What? Really? It was, only, it was only a couple of years oh. ago, so I don't know if I it's one it of those I saw it twice in the theater. It's... Loved it. I, I, I owned it on DVD. Twice yeah, right. Big on the theater. It's just... Uh, it changed my life. Yeah. I love that movie. And the, the third one, like they're going back to all the same. It looks like almost like a yeah. remake. There's going to be <laughs> a lot of same. I wonder if there'll be a callback in there. You think there'll probably be one? I'm going to put the over at one and a half. I'm going to put the over at probably like 90 minutes of a 91 minute movie. I bet it's just 90 minutes of member berries, Kevin Smith style member berries. <laughs> but it's, it's like, it's like looking at Facebook, right? And seeing all your friends get older. Like you don't want to do that. That's why I don't look at Facebook. I don't want to see like, I don't want to say, yeah, I just don't want to do it. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have a, oh. Brian looks the exact same. So people can look at <laughs> Facebook and be like, oh yeah, see, well, Brian, just a little thing. That's true. I, uh. I know I get to assign a movie next week, but if, if I win, which I most I can tell you this. I was looking at clips of Clerks, Coming to America. Clerks 3 would be a very inspired choice. Okay, it's only Phantom Events. Like, you can't watch it anywhere right now. Uh, it's at every AMC. Is it? Is it mine? No, I get, like, for one night, it's gone. I, no. Uh, Brian, it's how Phantom Events night. work. They're like Phantom. Fathom. 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 Yeah. The Phantom I, Event. I did a Fathom Event, too, and I don't even know the name of it. Got it. The Phantom Event. Oh, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, my God. All right. uh, Clark Street. You were about to say something about Clark Street. I wasn't going to say. I don't know. You say I wish I saw Clerks too. Mm, no, that's not. What I have I'm a movie say. for you. Well, you're not assigning me Clerks anything two. right now. No, and don't pick your nose on that. I'm, I'm on the I'm video, I'm please. Rushing. I'm rushing. Mm-hmm. I'm rushing. Ah, shit. Whatever I was going to say was going to change <laughs> the axis the of world. the earth forever. Yeah. <sighs> that would that would kill like half the animals on the earth. So many people. 
uh, would have needed to hear it that they would have all come to one side of the earth <laughs> to download the show at the, at the fast. Okay. That's right. And the whole earth would. Do. There is a way that you can do that. There is actually something I know, I saw in China. Superman. We were doing uh, top five like largest things in the world, and there's something. We were? No. Oh. Uh, after the, and we're, uh, there's some kind of thing in China. I'm sorry. I don't have the facts. I'm, my brain is literally fucking fried. Oh, yeah, wasn't it a, like a dam or something? Some kind of dam, and if they did it like the wrong way, it could actually tip the earth a little bit. <laughs> it's insane. Wow. China has that power. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you know we're capable of. All right. All right. Hold Let's on get out of here. What are we doing? Here. We're all done, yes? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Thank you to uh, oh the, the the GM of the uh, Pirates or the Penguins. No, uh, the Vancouver Canucks now. Jimmy Rutherford. Jim Rutherford for yeah. the uh, listener and for my shirt. I love my Ed Two Hundred Nine shirt. This is very. He funny. did the did the art as well. Yes, Jimmy, and it's hilarious. It's um, I would say it's a crude Photoshop, but it's uh, very funny. Mm. Have you seen it? Oh, you're oh. gonna laugh very hard. Am I? It's oh. it's quite good. Don't tell me what I'm gonna do. Right, here we go. Check that out, Instagram. Anderson and Brian. <laughs> 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 I That's good stuff. That's very funny stuff. Fun, enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I was explaining to him what the shining is on his way to school this morning. <laughs> Why would you I, do that? Because he was because <laughs> that mask that I got at the, fa- the the Film Vault Family Christmas last year. I think you got it. You brought it to the uh, White Elephant. Is it, or is it you? It's no, a, I didn't bring a it's mask. It's a shining uh, mask. Like the, it's the carpet. You got it for oh, sure. Oh, I think meant like a mask. It's the yeah, pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, for the, like the, a COVID the, mask. The COVID mask. And Atticus' yes. school still mandates that he wears masks, and that's too small for me, so I made it his. Nice. And he asked that's a cool kid. what it was from, and I said it's from a movie called The Shining, and then he had questions. Yeah. And then what I had to be very careful shine? what I told him. It's about a kid who <laughs> rides a big wheel. I, just, I, I told him the whole story, but twins. I was <laughs> explaining that the dad just gets kind of cranky and grumpy. He admits a bartender. And he doesn't write very good. Mm. He writes the same thing a bunch. The mom gets mad at him. Yeah. He uses tools. Kid, kid met a witch in room 237. Naked witch. You can't see it. <laughs> that might have been too much. It's titillating and rotten at the same time. <laughs> it really messes with your head, especially if you see it as a child. You don't know what to think. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. That was excellent. AndersonBryan.com on Instagram is where you see that, or AndersonBryan.com. Wait, did I say AndersonBryan.com on Instagram? AndersonBryan on Instagram. Instagram or AndersonBryan.com. Yeah, there you go. Annie Corbett is our featured artist. Check her out over at AndersonBryan.com. The aforementioned AndersonBryan.com. Facebook, Twitter, The Film Vault. Check us out there. Thanks to you all of our Patreon listeners. Hey, Geo, Jordan Wolf, Jordan Montgomery, Mitch Burns, and Mike Cole. We appreciate you guys helping out the show week in, week out. Invade the Decade is Avery's podcast. You probably missed your opportunity to see him live, so fuck yourself. Hmm. Agreed. <laughs> Avery, why'd you write that? You know I'll read anything you write. <laughs> Check us out on Patreon. Until next time, we do it for Van Gogh.